Okay, you may start. All right, thank you so much, everyone. I appreciate your time here today. Um, Shaheen and Mark and uh, to the entire ANCE community, uh, congratulations on another great event. Uh, and I appreciate the invitation uh, to be able to participate as well. Now, I wanna share with you some tips today uh, about really growing, growing your value. Let me, uh, let me share my screen here. And when I got started in this industry, uh, which has now been uh, about 30 years ago, actually, um, these, uh, uh, the, these principles, if you will, um, were absolutely uh, you know, spot on then. They're even more important today, to be honest, because you know, we're, we're at a point where um, we have, uh, you know, the world has changed, as you know, uh, but one thing that hasn't changed is we're in the people business and, and we are in the people moving business. Not really the product moving business, the people moving business, okay? And, and, and so growing your value, um, you know, in our business means essentially growing your influence, right? So uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about that, okay? So first off, my, one of my very first, you know, kind of the guy that opened my eyes to this concept of growing value and personal development was a speaker by the name of Jim Rohn. Many of you may have heard of him, but bottom line is he says, we get paid. We do get paid for bringing value to the marketplace. We're going to talk about what that means here in terms of bringing value to our marketplace. The reality is, is if you're not very valuable, you don't make much money. Okay. So if you grow your value, you're going to make more money. That's why everybody today in the world, okay, and maybe more people today than ever before, uh, are trying to find ways to make more money, trying to find ways to, to create financial security, to hedge their, you know, uh, bet, so to speak, against uh, what may happen in the economy in the future, or, you know, worst case scenario, what's happening to them right now. Uh, but the fact is, is that you can go make some money somewhere. OK, but you're not really going to grow your value. You're not going to make a lot of money uh, unless you work on yourself. Another Jim Rohn quote, very famous quote, says, if you work hard on your job, you can make a living. But if you work hard on yourself, you can make a fortune. Work harder on yourself than you do on your business. OK, and we're going to talk about what that means and what to work on. But I really want you to understand this concept because until you think value, right? Until you get out of your, uh, of a, if you have a day to day mindset, how am I going to pay the bills today? How am I going to pay the bills this week? Which obviously are important. We have to do that. There's no question about it. But that's unconscious activity. Your conscious activity needs to be spent on, on growing your value for the long term so that you're not in that day to day cycle or that week to week cycle or that month to month cycle uh, for much longer. You wanna get out of that cycle so that money is not an issue so that then you can concentrate on your imagination, your creativity, what's between your ears, your brain, they can help you create wealth, okay? And so that's really what this is all about is helping you create wealth. Now, let's talk about what working on yourself means and how you can grow your value. First off, working on yourself means working on your philosophy, right? How you see things, how you think about things. Your philosophy, as much as anything else, is going to dictate uh, your, your, the circumstances, the things that come into play, how you look at things. In fact, most people, philosophically, they end up blaming others for the things that happen to them. But philosophically, if you believe that there are things, there's a role that you had in creating that outcome, even if it wasn't a positive outcome, then you can work on improving that to eliminate a similar outcome happening in the future. 
preventing uh, those problems from reoccurring. So, so working on your philosophy is, is critically important. You know, how you, how you see things. And in the questions, I'll be happy maybe to, to take some specific cases if you guys like, but working on your philosophy is critical. Also, working on your attitude, what you tell yourself and others. Do you walk around every day thinking that somebody owes you something, right? Um, or do you walk around trying to figure out what you could do to help other people? Okay? Do you walk around and saying, I knew that was going to happen to me, uh, or this always happens to me? Uh, or, or is your philosophy or your attitude such that, gosh, I can now see how that happened to me. I'm going to do this to make sure it doesn't happen in the future. Uh, and so your attitude, how people see you, um, is critically important, but it all starts with what you tell yourself. And through that body language, through that internal dialogue and the manifestation of that, that's also what you tell others. And so if you, you've been around people with a bad attitude before, right? Do you want to be around them or not? Typically not, right? So that's probably one of the best reasons why you want to continue to work on your attitude as well. So other people want to be around you. They want to uh, listen to what you have to say. They want to do business with you. That's one way to grow your influence. Okay. And then of course your personality, how people see you. Now, are you a positive person? Okay. You have a positive attitude and a, and a outgoing personality. That's the kind of people that others want to be around. And again, we're in the people moving business, right? I mean, you can't move people unless you have influence on people, unless you've built a great group. Uh, and you probably won't do that if you've got a very sour or nasty personality. And so one of the things that you could do to work on your personality is just be very conscious about smiling. When you smile, your physiology is better. You're, you come across being, um, you know, much more attractive to other people. People are more likely to smile back at you. Uh, and, and people that are smiling are the ones that you want to talk to. People with bad attitudes or fearful attitudes are never going to do well in our type of business. Okay. Um, working on your language, how you communicate. Okay? Now, this is, this is an interesting subject because there are probably, you know, people on this training uh, and, and in this event from 30 or 40 or 60 different countries and multiple different languages. So I'm going to talk about your local language. For me, my local language, you know, and native language is English. But when you, when you talk about um, working on your language, you want to expand your vocabulary. Do you sound like when you speak, do you sound more like a server at a restaurant or do you sound more like uh, an executive at a multinational corporation? Now, I'm not saying you have to be somebody other than who you are. What I'm saying though is, is if you work on your vocabulary and you work on sounding uh, you know, more educated, right? Or, or uh, more eloquent is probably a better way to say it. Uh, then again, as people look at you, your value to the marketplace is probably going to grow. Now, um, I know people that uh, have done incredibly well for themselves that don't have an amazing vocabulary and that don't sound very educated. And they've worked very, very hard to get where they are. And that's awesome. I respect them. Uh, I, my hat's off to them. Uh, and so if you're, if you're in that category, then congratulations. But I will tell you that if you're not in that category yet, you, it's going to be easier to grow your value uh, if you also grow your vocabulary, your language skills, and most importantly, the ability to communicate, the ability to communicate with people on a, on a friendly level. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. And then, of course, work on your professional skills. And we'll talk about what those skills are to work on in just a second. But again, being more valuable to the marketplace means that you have value, means that you've learned some skills and that you know how to, uh, you know, use those skills 
to build a sales team, to build a, uh, you know, a, a, an income, a distributor force. Um, and so growing your professional skills is another way to grow your value. And that only comes with repetition and with practice. And it doesn't come quickly. It doesn't come overnight. So these are things that you want to be very consistent with uh, in terms of growing your value and working on these skills. So in direct sales, you know, there's, there's recruiting where you recruit people bringing your business. And then there's also connecting. Okay. Both are skills. The connector, you know, is really great at building relationships and personalities and putting people and or companies and people together. Okay. Most likely, uh, the connector or the recruiter, the builder is going to make more money than the connector, but the connector can make some residual income. But those are all great skills and they have to do with communicating with people. Okay. Train or tell. Here's another uh, good question. If you're telling people what to do, okay, and it's the right thing, then that's good. However, if you're training people on what to do, that means you've done it yourself. You can't truly train people to do something that you haven't done yourself. It's incongruent. There's a disconnect and people can smell that out. So you must master it first. Then you can train people, telling people what to do without showing them, uh, without having uh, credibility on what you're telling them and the experience of having done that successfully yourself is not, is not very successful and doesn't do much to grow your value. Build, build a team build people, build a sales force. Uh, that's where it's all about. And building encompasses so many parts, okay? And, and so many skills. And there's not, a, there's not, should I say, there's not a lot of skills, but there are a few skills that you've got to do right. Connecting and uh, building relationships, you know, is one of those. Um, and then, of course, when you really, when your value is at its highest in our industry, it's because you're leading people that you've built a team you've grown a team okay you've built a team and then you're leading those individuals so you're interacting at that point more with the leaders of that team than the masses in general so you can really make a bigger impact on a smaller number of people as a leader but that number of people has you know people on their teams as well and that's where you grow the biggest value is become a leader and you lead that group of people. Okay. So learn, prove, and teach. Let's talk about this. Obviously, your professional skills, we just got into it. Lead generation in our business, in any business, is one of those professional skills that you've got to learn. How to generate leads, how to get new people looking at your product or your service. Selling product, also critical skill because you can't really teach people how to sell unless you can sell yourself and, and sell that product yourself. Very, very important. Another skill okay, that you must need to learn how and then teach your people how is to listen to other people. See, our business is about bringing value. It's about filling a need in somebody else's life and you just can't assume what that is. You, if you listen, Okay, then you can know what it is and be more precise about how your product or service or opportunity uh, can, can fill that need. And so listening is one of the key components of communication. Communication is not speaking. Communication is conversing in a way that allows the person you're talking to to really understand where you're coming from, to really see the vision uh, and the picture that you're painting for them. That's communication. And so listening and communicating is a skill that you need to get good at. And my guess is if you're working with someone or have a mentor in this business, then, then they, can, they can teach you a little bit more about that. And, uh, and if they're successful, they've learned it themselves. But the big thing about our business and the reason our business is, um, you know, if you get good at these skills, you're going to have a place in any economy going forward is, again, People are the ones that spend money. And so it's all about finding, growing, and leading a group of people. And, and that encompasses many things that I don't have time to get into on this training. But when we talk about that, it all starts with building relationships. People are people. 
Okay. And people have a, have a need to connect on an emotional level. And, you, and, and some people are more uh, calculated, more, more fact oriented. Most people are very emotionally oriented. So as you build relationships with people, uh, the more people that you can build relationships with, okay, the more they're going to feel comfortable with you. And at some point in time, whether it's now or whether it's in the near future, those people are going to become prospects eventually. Until then, they're people. Uh, treat them as valued people. Uh, grow the relationship. Learn about them. Uh, and, and, and people will want to be around you, will let you into their conversations, will let you into their circle, will let you, uh, uh, you know, um, give them advice or point things out to them. And a big part of relationship building is building trust. Okay? Be trustworthy. Show up when you say you are. Help when, when you say you're going to help. Be there. Be someone that people can count on. Be reliable. If you have an appointment, be there a few minutes early or definitely no later than on time. OK, if people are counting on you for something, be a person they can rely on. If you're a person they can rely on, you're also a person that they might be willing to follow. or They're more likely to be willing to follow soon. Another critical thing about growing value and about building this team. And again, the build, bigger your team you build, the more value you're going to have to the marketplace. And, and the fact of the matter is, guys, is that there may come a point in time Okay, and hopefully this isn't the case for you, but there may come a point in time where, you know, you have to go look for another home, another company to go to work for. If you've served others first, okay, then, and, then people are going to more likely follow you with whatever you do in the future. So it's all about your team, all about serving others, uh, and then serving those people that aren't on your team. That grows your value, that grows your influence, which in the future pays huge dividends, okay? Um, so bring value to others, and that's the way that you're going to grow yours, okay? To, to have more, we must become more, okay? You can't be all things to all people. Yeah, that's, a, that's one thing to understand. You can't be all things to all people. Um, just mean something to the right people. If you mean a lot, if you've shown people how to change their life, okay, those people are more likely to follow you anywhere or to work with you anywhere, uh, or certainly not to leave uh, if you've not given them a reason to do so. So don't try to be all things to all people. Just be the right things or at least something to the right people. Okay, and so that's those are those are the notes that I had on growing value, and in in our marketplace today, you know that is that is the more value that you can bring. Okay, the more people that you can lead, the more your your value is going to grow on a regular basis. Okay, it, it is it is um, it's something that I can't overstate. Okay. Um, and we're going to get into some questions in just a few minutes, and we'll be happy to, to go into specific detail. But just so you'll know, for those of you that don't know me, I've been in this industry for nearly, well, actually, this month is 30 years. I started off as a distributor. We call them in my company members. Started off as a member, uh, was a top five earner in three different international companies in my 21 years as a distributor, then I started my own company, and it was a great learning experience. And through that, I, you know, I learned what to look for, what not to look for. But I also, in, in looking at distributor leaders that we wanted to bring on or that we wanted to have work with us, this concept of growing value became the things that I learned earlier uh, became really uh, apparent. And uh, and so after after a couple of years there. I sold my shares of that company and I became a consultant. I've consulted with companies for now seven, eight years. I've built a, a significant consulting business called Global Growth Consultants. Social Selling News ranked us in the top 10, in fact, number seven uh, last year. Uh, and then now I'm, I'm a co-founder and president of a company called Velovita. And again, back in a different role, back in this role, and we're, we're putting together distributor leadership now. Uh, and this concept of growing value from a company owner perspective and a management perspective, uh, it, it, it's very clear on 
you know, on those that have really focused on their philosophy, focused on their attitude, focused on building, you know, value and bringing value to other people in their team. Uh, and it's very, very clear for those people that had that influence that that didn't keep it up and lost it. And now they're just spinning their wheels or that um, have continued to build relationships, grow their influence, grow their value. And those are those are the leaders that company owners um, look to have the best relationship with, okay, uh, and and um, you know, and to and to have them be perhaps you know global master distributors or some leadership type position in a company. Literally, uh, if you if you grow your value to this extent, and you by growing your team, okay, um, grow your value, then. You're never going to have a shortage of work. You're never going to have a shortage of companies that want you to work with them. Okay, uh, and and you're never going to go hungry. In fact, it is exactly the opposite. As you create and help people create income, help them get past their day to day needs, like what we talked about in their week to week and month to month needs. You help people grow past that, then you're going to grow the influence with them as well, and you're going to have an army. Uh, if you will, that can help you execute and go. And together, you guys can really change the world. And we need today, we need people like that. Today in our world, um, our industry is experiencing unprecedented growth. In fact, anybody right now that works hard is going to experience growth if they choose the right company and the right opportunity. However, um, our industry go through cycles. We're in an up cycle now. Some point in time, we're going to be in a down cycle. The key for growing your value, okay, uh, or, or, or the key benefit of growing your value is, is that when you do experience uh, a down cycle, okay, uh, that that if you've if you've grown your value to an extent, you know, to to a great extent, that you don't have to worry about your income going forward. You don't have to worry about. Uh, anything uh, uh, in that respect, you can keep your eye on the ball. You don't have to go change opportunities or look for another income or anything like that. And so growing your value seems easy, okay? Uh, but you'll realize that when, when you're in a down cycle, if you've actually grown that value, then you won't have the income issues. And that's, that's what I want for you today is while things are easy, while things are growing well, okay, in our industry, um, let's grow our value by bringing people into this great industry, okay, uh, and then and then continue to grow that value and build that team so that we don't have to worry about the downward economic cycles in the future. So with that, I think we're about ready to start our, uh, our Q&A. Okay, those were very inspiring words, uh, Mr. Mack. And uh, we have here a question, okay, from one of our uh, listeners. Now, what is one difficulty in your industry that you were able to overcome that you are most proud about? Well, okay, that's a great question. Um, and, and the answer is this. Um, the hardest thing that you're going to do in this business is overcome your own negative emotions and your own fear. Okay, for me, when I first got involved as a distributor, Again, this is in 1990. That's how old I am. Uh, uh, the first 54 people that I spoke to about my company at that time said no. Uh, many of them were mean. Uh, you know, at that time, I was a 25-year-old kid. I didn't have a lot of credibility. Uh, and I saw other people uh, talk themselves out of doing the business, not to pick up the phone anymore. Right. And so they 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 basically wilted and faded away. So I guess probably the thing that I'm the most proud of is um, while most people did not and weren't willing to fight through those emotional hard times to get to the other side, for some reason, I was. And I think that reason was is that is that my sponsor, my mentor, my upline um, essentially wor worked with me to prepare me uh, he made me focus on my goals. So I had a very clear goal going forward. So no's didn't really matter too much. I mean, in the interim, uh, it was a bit of a challenge, but I go back and focus on those goals. And so probably the number one thing uh, for me was overcoming that negativity, that negative voice inside my head, that, that, that fear of rejection to get to number 55, which said yes, and number 56. And then from there, uh, my business 
uh, grew and I, the, the nose that I continued to get didn't bother me because I knew just on the other side, there were some ses- successes. Okay, great. And then just one last question because we're kind of losing time now. So one listener um, uh, asked like, uh, what is one skill that every distributor should have? The, the best skill that you could create in this industry is the ability to invite, to learn how to ask people to look at your business in a way that they say yes. And so that includes being able to ask questions, okay, listen for the answers, and then pose your, your company or product as a solution. But the ability to invite in such a way without saying too much, without people believing they know what it is already so they don't take the time to look. Uh, is is to invite people to look at your business in a way that they lean in instead of backing away. That is a skill that if you master, you will you will never have to worry about feeding yourself ever again. Okay, very, uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mack. Um, uh, we really got inspired with uh, with your story and uh, with sharing your experiences when it comes to uh, this kind of industry. And we do hope to. Uh, Uh, hear you again in the next uh, Asian Networkers Convention and Expo. It's my pleasure, Mark. Thank you so much, and I appreciate everything. Thank you so much. Have good a luck, good luck, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you.